Hi, I'm Stu McKamey of the USDA Systematic Entomology Lab. In this presentation, we're going to uh, key through some subfamilies of cichadelity using the OMEN 1949 key, the bottom half of the page, and the following page. If you look on the handout that has the, all the structures of the leafhoppers, you'll see in the ventral view of the face the gula and the gina, which are here and here. All the specimens I brought today have this condition where the, in the first couplet, the epistermum is concealed. This is AA. Epistermum is concealed, at least basally, by the gina. The, I didn't bring examples of ladrini or dorycephaline. Occasionally they are intercepted, but usually not. And we go to the second couplet, which is C and double C. And because the classification has changed, what you see as tetagaline is now known as cicadaline. And the main character there, they're most easily recognized by the swollen frontocopius of the head because they uh, have large muscles there that they are using to pump xylem fluids. In dorsal view, the ocelli are on, on the vertex or crown. There's one. And you can see a suture along the face that reaches it. And it comes up from the frontoclypeus onto the crown and reaches the, the ocellus. That's how you recognize cicadoline. Now, here's a specimen that does not have a swollen face. So this is the second half of couplet C. It is not swollen, you can see. So we, then we go to couplet D, which is lateral frontal sutures terminating above antennal pits or with ocelli near disc of crown and remote. So we have to find the ocelli. And here they are on the disc of the crown or vertex. There's one, and there's the other. And you can see that although there, there are transverse stree and ridges on the face, there's no suture leading to those. So that takes us to couplet E. Lateral margins of the pronotum are carinate, or nearly so. So we look at the lateral view of the pronotum. The ledge above the, uh, the antenna, in, so in couplet E, the ledge above the antenna is transverse, or nearly so. Here the pronotum, the edge of the pronotum is not carinate but the ledge of the above the antenna, which is here, is, is very strong and transverse. So that takes us to couplet F, and the and we see if just changing the focus here. That the face is concave, that frontoclypeus is concave. So, this is the subfamily Panthemiaini, which are generally flattened formed, flattened forms, as shown by, as it mentions in, um, in couplet D, but we're in couplet F right now which came from couplet D. And the appendix of the wing, which it mentions as another character for Penthemiaini, the appendix of the forewing, which is the membranous part beyond the cells, you can see in your, in your handout, it's more clear than in the specimen. But the appendix here, if the wing were open, you'd see this membrane beyond the cells. 
So that's been for me, Amy. Now I'll run through the couplet again with this specimen. This is, again, for the first couplet, double A, episternum is concealed, and the clypellus, the front of clypeus, actually, is in side view. You look at it, it is not swollen. Uh, I'm sorry, we go to couplet, uh, that takes us to D. In couplet D, we look at the lateral frontal sutures and the antennal pits. Here the antennal pits are on the face, and uh, for a couple of, for the first part of couplet D, they have to be on the crown, and here they are not. They're on the front of clypeus. For this subfamily, the characters are not so clear in the, that are in the key. If I will instead give you the diagnosis in the in the uh, that I gave for the subfamily in my presentation, which is that there's almost always large spots on the head and often on the pronotum. The ocelli are here, and there are no sutures going to them. And those ocelli are not visible in dorsal view. Let me get a good dorsal view here. The ocelli are just out of range. They're below these, these large spots. These are the pigment spots, and they're below that on the face, so you cannot see them in dorsal view. This is the subfamily Egaliaini. Okay, now we're going to run through another specimen of leaf hoppers. And uh, again, beginning at the couplet A, it has the episternum concealed. You'll have to take my word for that here. And that brings us to uh, couplet C, which is uh, the frontal clippy is swollen, as in Cicatolini. And that is not the case. So we go to CC, and uh, that brings us to D. And it um, refers to the ocelli. And if we try and find the ocelli here, we'll see that there, there are no ocelli on the face and no ocelli on the crown. There are no ocelli in this. So let's look at DD, the other part of that couplet. Uh, this is on the next page, on the back of that page. And it refers to ocelli vestiges, so this has to be the one. So that takes us to I, and the entire dorsum covered with circular pits. No, this is very smooth. So that takes us to uh, to the second part, couplet II, which takes us to J. And again, it talks about the distance between the ocelli when there are no ocelli. So if you look at JJ, the other part of that couplet, it says at the end, ocelli either present or absent, instead of being present. So we go to JJ. That takes us to L. Ocelli on face, well, again, they're absent, so that's the second part of the couplet, LL. That takes us to M. And I didn't bring an example of Zestocephaline with me, so I'll show you the Frontoclypius and the antennal ledge, a lack of one. There's really not much of an antennal ledge there, and certainly the and certainly the front the frontoclypius here is not extended over making the antennal ledge. So that takes us to MM, the other part of the couplet, and which takes us to couplet N. And uh, again it talks about the the uh ocello ocello ocular area, which is um, with the distinct ledge or carina above the antennal pit. We're still looking at that antennal pit here, right, the antenna, and there's, and there's no ledge. There's no ledge there. So we go to couplet NN, which takes us to couplet P, 
and Macropterus means full wings, and four wing usually without cross veins at the base. So let's take a look at the wings. And there are no cross veins at the base of the wing. And uh, the ocelli, it says, are often absent. This is for the couplet P, where it's describing this. And small, fragile forms, often brightly colored. Oftentimes those colors fade. This is the subfamily Tiflosabini. In this key, it says Cicatiline, but again, just like Tetagelity, it's uh, Tetagelini is the Cicatiline, or the Cicatiline in this key is Tiflosabini. It was the result of a, a generic homonym, and they, the, the International Commission had to decide which they were going to follow. So the so again, Tiflis, let me just review the main characters for Tiflis Sabini. Is the ocelli are absent? The ocelli are absent, and there are no basal cross veins. Those two characters alone, if you can remember them, will be enough. It's useful to run through the key, though, because you might have a zestocephaline or something like that, which is not one of the major subfamilies. And lastly, we'll run through one more specimen. Going back to couplet, starting at couplet C, you get a, a side view of the head. You see that that frontoclypeus is not swollen. So that takes us to CC. Um, it says ocelli near disc of crown. Let's find the ocelli. The ocelli are here and here on the, on the transition from the frontoclypeus to the vertex. And here you can see the antennal, the, the facial suture going right up to the ocellus and stopping. On the other side, right up and stopping. So let's uh, look at what it says for a couple of C. Lateral frontal sutures uh, terminating at antennal pits or with ocelli near disc of crown and remote from eyes. They're not remote from eyes at all. So we go to DD, which takes us, and we look at the dorsum. The dorsum is not covered with pits. So we go to II, which takes us to J. The distance between the ocelli is less than the distance between antennal pits. The, as we already saw, you can see them just barely in dorsal view. The antennae are right next to the eyes. So the distance between the ocelli is certainly not less than the, than the distance um, between the antennal pits. So we go to JJ. Uh, which takes us to couplet L. The ocelli are on the face. No, they're on that uh, on the margin of the head, if you recall. I'll put that on the screen again. They're on the margin of the head here and here, right where it transitions from the vertex to the frontoclypeus. So that fits very well with um, with LL which takes us to a couple at M. Again, that uh, frontoclypeus is not extended. There's barely any, any ledge over, over the antenna. This is the base of the antenna. The stylet of the antenna is, is broken. But this is the base of the antenna. The stylet's broken, but there's barely any ledge over there. So that takes us to MM, I'm sorry, that, so that's the, the MM, which takes us to N. The uh, ocell ocular area with the distinct ledge or carina above the antennal pit, we're still looking at that, and we can see there's not much of a ledge. So we go to NN, which takes us to couplet P. If you look at the, at the forewing, we see there are cross veins at the base of the wing. This, this genus has lots of 
reticulation within the cells, but it does have definite cross veins near the base of the wing. Even these would be absent in Tipo Sabini. So that takes us to PP. And uh, which takes us to Q. And at this point, that's as far as you have to take it because Hecoliny is now part of Delta Cephaliny. So this is the subfamily Delta Cephaliny. Again, the key characters for this subfamily to review are the antennal pits at the margin between the vertex and the frontal clypeus and the, the sutures, facial sutures run up to those pits and stop. And that concludes the king of the subfamily portion.